Give me a call. Love you. And this message. Please don't come over there disturbing me. But just like your father. Carl Dwayne found a senior. I had to put a restraining order on him, and I will put one on you. You understand? And this message. Mandela Turner, I'm disowning you, and I'm not calling you no more. Don't call me, no. End of message. Delete. Press 7. Reply. Deleted. Or Mania, she's having an episode right now. And, uh, she's what? Uh, an episode right now. I was going to ask you if I could get a, a police uh, escort to take it to the hospital. Okay, so you need medical assistance? Yes. What city, sir? Excuse me? What city? Uh, Houston. Stay on the line for medical assistance. Okay, thank you. Med transfer to Houston Medical. Stay on the line. Okay. Well, I enjoy life. Some days it's difficult for me because I feel, I feel, well, I feel a little depressed some days. I, I don't, I haven't achieved a lot of things I wanted to achieve in my life. I thought I would be very successful. I have a wonderful career, but looks like that hasn't happened. I worked for an airline for 25 years. The company I worked for was Continental Airlines, and they went bankrupt twice. The first six years I was with the company, they went bankrupt. They uh, filed Chapter 11, and then about seven years later, they filed Chapter 13. And now the company that I started with doesn't even exist anymore. Continental Airlines is no longer Continental, it's United Airlines. But the 25 years I was with the uh, airlines, I got a chance to travel to Europe. I've been to Paris, France, Frankfurt, Munich, and Wiesbaden, Germany. I went to London, England, Barcelona, and Madrid, Spain. I've been to Madrid, Spain. I've been to Australia, uh, Bahamas, Jamaica, Bermuda all over the USA, Hawaii, and uh, Alaska. I've been all over Mexico. I really enjoy traveling. I enjoy meeting people and uh, learning the culture of other people. That's what I really enjoyed most about uh, flying, is meeting new people in different countries and learning their cultures and eating new foods and drinking their wines. I love wine. That's one of my biggest habits, <laughs> drinking wine. <laughs> In fact, that's one of my downfalls because I became an alcoholic. I've been to AA. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I even have my serenity coin. So I've been um, sober for the past five months. I haven't had a drink of alcohol and almost had a drink of beer tonight. But um, I take life in stride each day. Each day is a challenge to get up and face the day. I was one of her bridesmaids. Where are you? Right there. I was pretty there, wasn't I? I want to be pretty. Well, uh, I want to be pretty again. Wasn't I pretty? Everybody said, ooh, London, you're so pretty. I got so many compliments. That's all the sisters. I can't believe she has kept all of my cards and everything. I am so, I, I just can't get over that. I just can't get over that you have kept. Even when you were a little boy, I mean, when you had to make, you were young. <laughs> this is cute. I like the one that's from your dad. <laughs> this is really neat, Jane. <laughs> okay, what was it like when you first met mom? You got it on? Is you're on now? Um, when I first met her, I think the, fir the first time I'm, I met her, we were at a volleyball um we were playing volleyball at our apartment complex. They had a place where you can play volleyball, you know, sanded court, you know, had sand and everything. 
and she came out while we were playing volleyball. We invited her to play. I think that's how it started. I don't remember all the details, but I know that at the time she was real petite. Um, she looked real cute because uh, I had seen her once or twice before driving our little sports car. So me and a friend of mine, Doug, had made comments about her. We were kind of laughing. Matter of fact, there was one guy, um, another guy at the complex was were trying to say he was going to hit on her and get her. And I, and I just laughed at him. But we met there, and that's from there that's where it started. Oh, look at, Look me. at you. <laughs> I want that picture. I want to scan it. I want to put that. That one. Oh, Lord, my hair look. Oh, Lord. What kind of, that's, that's a, that's a do-do-do. <laughs> put it next to you. A nappy do-do-do. <laughs> it was, <laughs> let me take my glasses off. I was, Smile. I was about 25, and I thought I was so fine, like fine wine, it gets better with time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure exactly what happened that first, after that first meeting, how we hooked up or whatever. I know that it didn't take long, and we, we had gotten together. Um, but she was very friendly. I mean, she, was, she talked really good. I mean always smiling, seemed pretty positive, all those things. But um, now that I'm coming to more of a realization of what kind of personality changes she might have had, that was one of her, again, pretend personalities. Uh, because I've seen her do it, because I used to call at one time when I was, after we had gotten married, I used to tell her that she had a, an airline personality and she had a different personality when she came, you know, at home, because she meet people and all of a sudden she's the most nicest person you'll ever meet. And a lot of people, you know, warmed up to her that way. But, you know, that, that to me was, now I see it as, as being another side of herself. That wasn't really who she was. I didn't finish the only in a couple of years. I did my freshman year at Prairie View and I transferred to University of Houston for my sophomore year. Then I went to Houston and Party, party, party. <laughs> that was an academic suspension. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. After coming from a small town, yeah. Prairie View's a small, you know, small community. Yeah. And then going to Houston, getting fake IDs. <laughs> it was party Thanks city. <laughs> yes. I guess we could. Look at that, get a picture of this. Okay, now look. Oh, geez. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Oh, the trees are already blooming. So spring's in the air. But Giddens was a small little rural town. Uh, On the weekends, one of the fun things that we used to do is uh, go to the drive-in theater in Burnham, Texas. Burnham's about 30 miles from Giddens. Shane, it's Mom. I was calling to see if you got a, a chance to call Eric to let him come in. End of message. Delete. Press 7. Deleted. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need because the ticket was non refundable. I said, well, that's okay. The ticket's good for a whole year. I'll use... <laughs> I said, I'll use my ticket again. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, because it was a round trip ticket. <laughs> you know, it was a one way. I said, I'm going to make it one way because I wasn't sure when I was going to come back. Mm -hmm. So I'm making one way to New Orleans, and I was going to have a good time on Bourbon Street. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is standing in front of me. If I were to describe my mom in one word, it would be awesome. I'm at, I'm at Ben Taub, uh Psychiatric Center, the hospital, off Cambridge and um, Main Street, or it's close to Cambridge and Main Street. Okay. Are you a patient of Benton? Oh no, it's not. It's about my mom. Um, right now she's having an episode and she's uh outside of the hospital on, at the bus stop. Um, whenever uh she usually has an episode, I usually take her here. And oh, if she doesn't go in by herself, 
Uh, I usually would have to call for a police escort to assist her into the hospital. It's hard to believe that I'm 60 and I've lost so many. One of my best friends, Lena Ann Davis and I, we were, we're cousins, but we're also close friends. We did a lot of traveling together. Our favorite places was Atlantic City and uh, Las Vegas, because both of us loved to gamble. We would go to, the first time we went to Las Vegas, we were up all night. We didn't even sleep for over 24 hours. We were so excited. <laughs> we were like little kids in the slot. You know, like Christmas morning, you, I mean, the Christmas day, you can't sleep. Christmas Eve, we were like that when we went to Las Vegas. We couldn't sleep. We were like, our eyes were so big when we went to Las Vegas. Because the casinos and the bright lights and the entertainment and the stars. and We met a lot of stars when we were in Las Vegas. We seen a lot of people that we never thought we would see again before. We saw people like... Red Fox, Richard Pryor, Gladys Knight and the Pips, uh, James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, people that have passed away, I met them. I met a lot of people during my lifetime. I met Betty Shabazz, she's the wife of uh, Malcolm X. I met, uh, I met Dick Clark on the flight. I met a lot, a lot of people flying, and I really enjoyed it. So I've had a good life, a very good life. She did have some quirks, um, and I think I told you once about early on, once she had, uh, I took her to drop her off at school, uh, you know, she was taking this course in upholstery at a junior college over there. And I was about five minutes late picking her up, and that's the first time I seen her just kind of go off, you know, over something that was so minor. I'm not sure what kind of anxiety she might have had when she came and had to wait a few minutes for me to come, although it only, I was only maybe five minutes late at the most. Um, I think later she might have apologized for it. Maybe that might why maybe why we even stayed together, because I, you know, it was quick and it was over with, but I thought it was kind of like out of line, but, you know, you overlook a lot of things. I don't know, because I was real tiny. Brain didn't work too well. I can't remember. But we went to a courthouse, and she was upset about something. And she just told the lady, write your name down in my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> just write your name. <laughs> the lady wrote her name, and I'm sitting there like, she wrote it down and she's like, Good, thank you. I'm gonna sue you. And just walked away, it like, just rampaged away. And I was just like, I was just like, four year old Carl. I looked at her and I was like, I apologize for her. And then followed. I wasn't supposed to talk to strangers. <laughs> That's when they came out. The doctor said that she had, um, she was manic depressant, I think that's what he said. They actually then had hospitalized her into a mental hospital. Uh, she was there for, and for a couple of weeks and we, I made every effort to make sure to call and Shane and I went out to see her and sometimes we'd get there and she'd be talking crazy to us and I told her, you know, if you keep talking crazy like you know they're, they're gonna keep you in here and all of a sudden she figured out how to talk real nice and she was out one of a few days and I would love to move back to Frederick Maryland where Shane was born at I had formed a lot of close friends there what made you guys move um that's when I first had my first panic episode okay that's when I was first diagnosed with bipolar she wanted us to sleep in her bed it's funny that every time she asks us to sleep in her bed, bad things happen. And then, so, I was in there, and then I woke up to her walking around naked saying, Jesus is coming. And I was like, oh, I've heard about this fellow. This should be good. Different things.
things happen, I mean, I, I'd come home and sometimes, and it, this is when it really started getting stressful, is I'd go to work and I'd come home and she'd be there and she'd come tell me about, she, she talked to her dead grandmother or she was talking to her dead father and and died and, and I know Jesus and all these different things. And, and it really got scary that she was talking to the children about it. And it's like, that's I, I didn't know what to do on that aspect. Is that November? What date is that? I left my glasses in the car. This was dedicated to my mother. November. 1984. Is it November? Mm hmm. Daddy's birthday is November the 7th. Earl G. I took her back. Oh, that was so open. The wind. That door just open. Wind. Did you see that door just open? Did I just, wind. Mom. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, Lord have mercy, is that my dad? <laughs> Ow! Do you believe in ghosts? Of course. Spirits? I do I said, Earl G in that door open. Um, um, right now she's, she's having an episode where she's talking crazy, talking to herself and uh, not making any sense. Uh, I would just uh, allow them to... I mean, the reason I'm asking yes. why do you need a dispatch right now is because she's at the top. So are you not able to take her inside? Oh, yeah, I'm not able to take her inside. And they said, uh, the security guard said you have to call the police for, the, uh, for assistance. To take her inside the location? Yes. Okay, so do you need a medical unit to do that, or do you just need the police? Uh, I believe just police officers. Um, the last few times, it was just police officers who took her into the hospital. Okay, one moment, all right? Okay. Down the line for me. Thank you. But I would like to take some uh, drama classes and music classes and even dance classes. I feel like you never get too old to learn something. I feel like the mind is, like Dr. King said, mind is a terrible thing to waste. And when you don't use your mind, you lose it. And I have, I feel like I still have a lot to offer. I, I, I want to learn a lot. I would love to write a book. Maybe one day I'll get the motivation and the drive and sit down, write a journal. That's what I could start, just start a journal every day. Before I know it, maybe I have a book written. Like people, you know, we're all characters in the game, but then it's like, are you the character? Are, are you the person who's stuck being the character? Or are you the player who's directing the character where to go? And then like to my mom, it's like, well, her character's glitching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like her character's not acting right. She's, she's glitching. She's, ah, ah. you know, she's not being, like the player isn't like, he's not, be, he's not able to like direct the character exactly how he would want the character to go. Or move up the, move up levels and... Yeah, like, be things that you want to be. It's like, it's hard for her to be herself because it's like, she doesn't know who she is because she has like these, she has like a side, like, she has a conscious side and then she has like the unconscious side. And the unconscious side always becomes conscious and then it's like an incoherent person moving in the game. So I think that's amazing as well, to see someone who's not being the player move the character. When someone is like that, it's very trying for the people that's in your life. And of course, and I'm pretty sure you guys can, you can, you can, you can attest to that. One person that's, that, that's out, of, out of sync with reality can really affect the other person. So I feel like I was affected by that in a negative way because I started drinking too. I'm not sure what I was drinking for, but I did drink a lot back then. I started drinking a lot. I, when I first met her, it, it didn't happen that way. I didn't <laughs> but now, and then I started drinking, um, I don't know, it was, and going out, um, whatever. But I wasn't happy with my life there. It was like March of 93. That's when I had filed for divorce. I really got tired of things in the marriage had really tumbled to an all-time low. Uh, I filed for, uh, put a restraining order on their dad, and I 
filed for divorce. And we were going through this legal separation and all of that. And uh, I wasn't, I was, I was cooking food. I mean, I would cook food on top of food for the boys. Because I wasn't working. I had taken six months off of work. And uh, I was just drinking wine. I was barely eat. I was nothing but skin and bones. And I had an emotional breakdown. I really did. I, but then after that, I wasn't around her that much. I would come and get the kids and and drop them off when it was time to drop, drink, drop them back off and keep them while, you know. And that lasted for a little while until I got a phone call from the school regarding, I'm not sure if it was Carl or Shane, one of them told, was it, which one was it that said something about her, their mom wanted them to take some pills or something that, that I don't know, it was to commit suicide, I'm not sure, but they were concerned about it. Um, a crazy moment that I really remember that really sucked at me is the fact that I remember one morning we woke up my mom woke us up and she was like, let's take these pills and uh, let's go all go to heaven or, you know, try and kill us all. And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, that sounds like fun. Going to heaven, what? That sounds awesome. Let's go. Sweet. <laughs> and my brother's like, oh, let's get, the fuck, let's, let's get out of here. So that was a crazy moment. Then like, she called me and said, I'm going to kill myself, bitch, and hung up the phone. And I was like, that's, that's a weird uh, introduction. He called me again and said, guess what I'm going to do today? What? I'm going to finish my sandwich. I'm going to drink my bottle of water, and then I'm going to take these four bottles of pills. I was like, that's weird, you've never, she's only told me plans to kill herself once, and then tried to, so I was like, oh no. This is the last time you will speak to your mother, please don't call me ever again, ever, ever, ever again, if I survive tonight, please. Do not ever call me again and kiss my puss to hell in it. End of message. Delete. Press 7. Reply. Press 8. Save. Press 9. More options. Deleted. That was it. The cell phone was off. You didn't know where she was. Uh, I had a, a different phone, so I didn't have any other family number for like, until South Monday. And then she called me. So Tuesday, I was just like, huh, my mom's dead. I'll bury the woman. I'll wait for the funeral. Wednesday, she calls, and she's just like from this different number, and it's just yelling her same bullshit. And I was just like, huh, so you're alive. She was like, what do you mean? I was like, you just told me you were going to kill yourself. I assumed you were dead. Now you're not. In that, in that three-day span, I just got over. If she does die, like, I'm, like I've already grieved. So it won't affect me at all. And I thought that's a weird thing to say. Okay, um, can you give me a description of your mom? Is she black? My Hispanic angel. She's black. Uh, she has like a, a, a camo jacket on. Excuse me? on things it's like I'm very positive about life because I, duh 
<laughs> so instead, like, you know, when my mom would have these episodes and whatever, she acts all crazy and stuff, instead of seeing them negatively, like, oh my God, mom, stop acting like, stop act, stop being like that, stop being like that, stop acting like that. But it really is like, that's who she is. You know? <laughs> I may have a heart attack. My damn kidney, one of my kidneys is failing me. You know, I am old. You may not see your 60th. I hope I do. I doubt it. I doubt it. You say it's what, mono? Shit. I think it's mono. I'm gonna take me to Just take me to somewhere. And give me a sub sandwich and a tomato sandwich. You have to go there and turn. What's that damn bus? Hey, mom, mom. You know you and the bus gonna have an accident? Which subway? The one right over there, in the medical okay. center. I mean, in the uh, Bel Air Center. Okay, I'm gonna use your, I'm gonna use your the next one. I missed Jesus it. Jesus Christ. Mom. Oh, have mercy. I said a stressful day, now you're stressing me out. I don't want to go with that funky ass Roddy, because he's nasty. Don't make the one that sounds like a train. Oh, I'm sorry. Such a funky ass car in this funky air. I can't breathe. And my throat is so sore. <laughs> Just take me to the medical center. Sick of you and your brother. I'm sick of y'all. All that bullshit I've had to put up with your daddy. You break that little girl in my house. Got the other babysitter pregnant, gave me two venereal diseases, beat my ass. I'm sick of y'all. I'll three of y'all. <laughs> I had over 395000 dollars in the T Roll price and the S D Jones account, and now I'm broke. You bitches, y'all don't care about nothing but money. Just take me to the school. Oh, for sure. It's called, well, I like to call it clearing yourself, um, auditing, um, getting rid of the friction, getting rid of the, the mess that you keep in you that you, it's almost like you're unconscious of them, but they're still in you and they keep rising. They, they keep coming back. Um, it's almost like, well, let me describe it like this. Let's say you're driving a car, right? You know, driving a car can become second nature once you drive for so long that it's almost like you're unconsciously driving. But then you start having like these random thoughts or feelings and emotions pop inside of you from the past and you listen to them. Boom, you get an accident. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And basically, when I'm talking about getting rid of the friction and the clearness, it, it allows you what I find is to stay present in the moment because that's all there is and uh, you should be there. But whenever you're not in the moment, you think of the past, you think of the future, you, you want, I mean, it's like you want to do things, you want to do this and that, but really it's like, what are you, you're not doing any of those things. You're here right now. That's all that matters. Actually, actually never mind. She, she, yeah, yeah, she's fine. She's fine. She's okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. My, everything's changed. The situation. I'm, I'm positive. Okay. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hey, you remember when you were a little boy, three and six, and an airplane started crashing coming in to Newark? I took six months off. Because I want you to at least be older if anybody else was in me. And I would play every day that cassette. If my brother's in trouble, I would always help him out. If 
Okay. 